Hello and welcome to today's EPAC2 WebEx session. My name is Dan Thompson and I'm one of the Information Systems Trainers here at the NHS BSA and I'll be taking you through the EPAC2 system today. Today's session is a whistle-stop tour aimed at PCN users of the system and it's aimed at giving them an understanding of how they can access EPAC2, how they can access and navigate around the various different pre-built content that's available within the system and how they can use that content to aid them in their role within the, the PCN setting. So we're going to start by having a quick look at the EPAC2 web page. And this is the main web page for the system. It can be accessed simply by searching for, for EPAC2 in any, in any search engine. If you Google EPAC2, this should be the, the first link that comes up. Main web page and does hold all of the various different reference materials that go along with the system. So we'll be referring back to this page as we go through the system when we're looking at some of the pre-built content. Most important area of this page is the Access EPAC2 button and that will take you across to the sign-in page and allow you to log into the system itself. Yeah. Below there, we have details on the registration process. So if you're not already registered for access to EPAC2, all of the registration information you need is contained within that registration area. There's also a separate registration page that can be accessed via the, the uh, icons on the, the right-hand side at the top of this page. So we're going to log into EPAC2. Now, again, to do that, you simply need to select the Access EPAC2 button. And I will just quickly mention that that will take you across to the sign-in page. However, it's not possible to actually bookmark the sign-in page itself. The nature of the URL for the sign-in page means that it's not possible to bookmark that page. So if you are going to bookmark any page, we recommend you bookmark this one and then always use Access EPAC2 to actually access the sign-in page itself. So you'd simply select Access EPAC2. That will take you across to this page, which is the sign-in page for the EPAC2 system. Uh, once you register for the system, you will register using your email address, and that email address will be your user ID for the system. Uh, if for any reason you can't remember your password or you want to reset your password, you do have an automated reset password function. You simply click here on the Need Help Signing In section, and that will generate an automated email, which will allow you to reset your passwords. Your passwords will reset automatically every 120 days. So you do have a little under four months before well, you have to reset that password. And again, every 120 days, you will receive an automated password reset reminder email. Because those two emails are automated, you do may want to keep an eye out on your spam or junk folders in case they do drop into there. Some uh, email applications may well direct them straight to your spam or junk folder. So just be aware of that if you are resetting your, your password. When you do register for access to EPAC2, you will register under a specific organization. In most people's cases, we're in this WebEx, that would be a PCN. However, once registered for the system, you will have access to information for all organizations nationally down to practice level. So you'll be able to see every other organization down to practice level and you'll be able to compare them to your own PCN. So to sign in the system, it really is as simple as entering your user ID and password. You then select the, the sign in link which will then take you across to this page, which is the landing page for EPAC2. The landing page has been designed primarily to allow users a quick and easy way to access all of the pre-built content that's available within the system. Split into a number of different tabs. You'll default to a news tab, and this will include a news feed, which will have uh, updates on any uh, uh, news around the system. So if we're going to be making the system unavailable for any reason, or if we're going to be releasing any new content, that will all be publicized via the news feed, and you'll see that as soon as you log into the system. Next to that, we have the EPAC2 latest data section, and that just details what the latest month of information available in the system is. As you can see, currently uh, November 2019. We do have data available in the system from January 2014 onwards. So that's a little under six years worth of data. And that will build up to an eventual 10 years worth of data as new months are added onto the system with the latest month currently being November 2019. So that's the news page. Next tab is the dashboards area. And the dashboards area allows you to access all of the dashboards that have been created and made available to all users within the system. So to navigate to the dashboards page, you simply need to select the link for dashboards and the page will then navig navigate across to that area. Just while it's doing that, I'll quickly mention EPAC2 is an internet-based system, so you can access it anywhere you can get online. As long as you have an internet connection, you can access EPAC2. Because of that, it does work the same as most online applications. The better quality internet, applica internet connection you have, the quicker the system is going to operate. 
You can also access the system on mobile devices, so you can access it on a tablet or a, a mobile phone. However, it isn't optimized to run on mobile devices, so you might find if you are accessing it on a, on a tablet or a mobile phone that some of the functionality doesn't work. It is only optimized to run on either a laptop or a PC, so just be aware of that. You can get in on a mobile device, but you might not have all the functionality. So we've navigated across to the dashboard page and this last this all of the dashboards available. So you've got a, a range of different dashboards. There's an EMS dashboard, there's mental health uh, comparators, polypharmacy prescribing comparators, respiratory, there's diabetes, medicines optimization, and so on. So a range of different dashboards available, and these are available to all users of the system. Dashboards operate on a, all on a similar functionality, so they all operate in the same way. And I'm just going to take you through one really quickly just so we can get an idea of how you can access all of the information contained within that dashboard. So for this particular example, we're gonna focus on the, the polypharmacy prescribing comparators. So to, to access that dashboard, simply click the link for the dashboard you want to view. The dashboard will then generate and open up on its landing page. So you can see that it now takes you across to the landing page. Dashboards themselves are a way of bringing together a collection of different reports on a similar topic. So users can access that all in one, uh, one location. All of the dashboards are made up of a number of different pages and there's a couple of different ways you can access those. For the polypharmacy prescribing compound, as you see, I have a series of tabs across the top left-hand side of the screen there that allow you to access either a different organizational breakdown or viewing the information at different levels. Now, unfortunately, we don't have a PCN view available within the system at the moment, so you can't actually access any information based on that PCN structure. That is something we're developing, and that is something we hope to have in the system in the, in the future, but at the moment, that's not currently available. If you did want to look at any information for any of your individual practices that are registered under your PCN, you could do that using the practice tab and breaking the information down to practice level. For this example, we're just going to focus it at CCG level. We can break that CCG information down into a number of different areas. So if you want to look at just your CCG compared nationally, or your CCG compared with its area team, or its local office, or its similar turn, or so on. To access any of that information, you simply select the tab for the level that you want to view information at. And the system will then regenerate and present the information at that organizational level. Below there, you've got a selection criteria pane, and this allows you to select the criteria you want to apply to the particular dashboard that you're viewing. And all dashboards will have a selection criteria pane, so you can change exactly what you're viewing within those reports. For the polypharmacy prescribing comparators, it breaks it down to the prescribing of multiple medicines. You might want to look at the average number of unique medicines per patient, or percentage of patients are 10 or more, 15, 20 or more. You might want to look at the patients with an anticlogenic burden score of six or nine or 12 or more. So it really just depend on the particular metric that you want to use within the dashboard. That's what you'd select from your, the drop-down list. So for this, I'm gonna look at the percentage of patients prescribed 10 or more unique medicines. So select that from the list. And then all of the reports displayed within the dashboard will automatically update to reflect the particular metric that you've selected in the drop-down list. You do have the option to view this information at various different organizational levels. So it will default to show you information for all patients, but you might want to break it down and look at a specific age range. So you might want to look at the, just the patients over 65, over 75, or over 85. If you do want to break it down to a particular age range, you do have these radio buttons that simply allow you to switch between either all patients or the over 85. And again, whenever you change one of those radio buttons, it'll automatically regenerate that information and take you back to it whatever button that you've selected. Below there, you have the option to select a time period, and these this will default to the latest month available, so it'll only show you whatever the latest month uh, available data is within there. However, you can obviously go back and run the report for any of the previous months worth of data if you want to look at uh, any historical data within the system. You can also select an organization to highlight, and again, depends on the organizational level, of the, which organization you get to highlight. If you're looking at the CCG res, uh, report, you'll be able to highlight an individual CCG. If you're looking at a practice report, you'll be able to highlight an individual your practice. That will default to the organization that you're registered under. So if you're registered under a particular organization, you won't have to go through and select it in there. It will automatically default to your organization. But again, if you want to look at something different, you can through, go through there and simply pick an alternative organization from the drop-down list and see information for there. 
Now below there, you get the actual reports that relate to this metric. So in this case, there's a number of different reports. You have a bar chart giving you the percentage of patients prescribed 10 or more unique medicines, and then comparing the, the CCG you've selected to highlight against all of our CCGs in its area team. You've got some performance tiles on the, the right-hand side there that allow you to break down the figures for the CCG, the area team value, and the difference between the two. You've got so a trend over time below that, allowing you to compare a trend over a longer time period. So if you are making any interventions, you'll be able to see if those do have any effect on the, the prescribing within the, the particular organization that you're looking at. And finally, at the bottom there, you get a text field, and that's just giving you a bit more information around the particular metric that you're actually looking at. With all of the charts that are displayed within the system, you do have the option to, to look at that as either a chart or a table of data. So this particular comparator is showing me the percentage of patients prescribed 10 or more unique medicines. If I want to know exactly how many patients that relate to, I can look at the a table of data that's been used to produce this chart. So if I simply select the display option and then select data. And then I'll get figures on the actual uh, number of patients that that relates to rather than that, just that percentage figure. So you can switch to, between the two and you can do that on both charts that are available within the system. So all of the charts there, you can switch between the chart and the data view. If you want to take any of this information out of the system, if you possibly want to use this for any practice visits or, or addressing any patient concerns and you can't take the information out of the system, you do have the option to both print, which will give you printable PDF and printable HTML, and you have an export link, which will give you either formatted data or unformatted in the raw data sense. So you can't take that information directly out of the system. Now, if you do use the, the polypharmacy dashboard in particular to identify any patients you might want to, to focus more on, you might want to do structured medication reviews. Unfortunately, there's no way within the system itself to identify those individual patients. However, if you have identified some patients you would like to take further, we can supply their patient details externally from the system. So if you did want to know exactly who those patients were, click on the supporting information tab. Under there, you do have a link for some uh, patient details and that will detail the process you need to use if you do want to request any of those patient details. So just be aware if you do identify any patients and you can't locate them within your practice systems you can supply the details of those patients externally from the system. So that was the, the polypharmacy uh, dashboard and it was just a really quick tour of how you can access the information within one of the dashboards. To navigate back to the landing page, there's a couple of different ways you can do that. You can use the dashboard icon on the universal taskbar at the top, under which you'll only have the option for EPAC2. That will take you directly back to the, the news feed of the landing page. Alternatively, you can use the breadcrumb trail in the bottom left-hand corner. And the system does leave a trail of all of the pages you previously accessed. So if you just want to navigate straight back to the dashboard, page you can do that within the, the breadcrumb trail itself. Again it is important to be aware that if you're using that dashboard link on the universal taskbar you will only ever have the option for EPAC2 to select in there. You won't be able to select any of our other dashboards and simply be able to navigate back to the landing page. If you want any of the other dashboards you do need to navigate back to the landing page and then select dashboard and pick the dashboard from there. Also important, you will have a home icon. It's important not to, uh, to confuse that with the landing page. The home icon will take you to the home screen for the Oracle BI product that powers the EPAC2 system. So that not the landing page. So if you do click on that, no harm done. It will just simply take you to the, the Oracle landing page. But you do need to use the dashboard and then EPAC2 to navigate back to the landing page itself. Final tab we're going to look at is the prescribing reports and these are a series of pre-built reports that have been designed to allow you to use as a quick and easy way to access their information. You see a range of different reports from key reports to prescribing comparators, controlled drugs and you've got your MOKTT reports there as well. To access any of the, the different uh, categories, we simply expand the expander arrow on the left-hand side, and that will open up and show the reports that are available under that particular category. Very similar to the dashboards, if you want to access any of the reports, just simply select the link. That will then open up the report page and display the report information. Again, most of them work very similar to the dashboard in the sense you'll have a series of tabs across the top of the screen to allow you to select the, the time period breakdown or the organizational breakdown you want to use. You'll then have a criteria selector to allow you to select the various different uh, comparators that are available for this particular report category. Unlike with the, the dashboard, if I do change that comparator, it doesn't automatically update the report. I do need to click the apply button. And that's simply just to, uh, to stop the system automatically updating. Once you click apply, 
the reports will then update to whatever selections you've made within that selection area. Again, same as the report, uh, same as the dashboard, sorry, you will have the option to switch between the graph and the table view. So if you want to see the raw data behind that chart, you can access in the table. And if you do want to print or export any of these reports, you can do that. You have the print and export option at the bottom of the reports there. And again, you'll have the same export and print options wherever you are within the system. So that was one of the pre-built reports. Again, we'll just quickly jump back onto the, the news page now. Just use the news link and the breadcrumb trail on the bottom. And that pretty much concludes your whistle stop tour of the EPAC2 system. I will quickly mention that obviously this is a really quick tour of the system just to show you how you can get in to access EPAC2 and use some of the, the content that's available within there. If you do need more help using the system, we do have a range of different training options available. If I jump back onto the EPAC2 main page, you'll see we do have an EPAC2 training page itself and that will detail all of the, the training options currently available for the system. So if you do have any specific questions around any of the dashboards or any of the data that's available within the system, please do get in touch and we're always happy to provide any answers that we can. So that concludes today's EPAC2 WebEx. I do hope it's been useful.